Thank you very much in indeed. It's an honour and a privilege to be here. It's still very kind of you to invite me, despite my nationality, um, which um, I realise is doing considerable uh, damage to the European Union project. But while we're still a member, I will take the liberty to talk a bit about um, posted workers and the choice of law rules. Now, I'm, I'm confident that for those of you who aren't lawyers, my presentation will turn your stomach to such an extent it will confirm you in the wisdom of your choice not to have become lawyers. <laughs> but for those of you who have got a legal bent, you may um, benefit from one or two of the thoughts. Now, the problem about this whole area of law is the interface between the Posted Workers Directive, the Treaty, and the Rome 1 regulation. And to put it very simply, the Rome 1 regulation on the choice of law says that basically parties are to choose the applicable law which applies to the contract, unless in the case of employment, there is better protection under the default rules, which also apply where no choice is made. So I'm going to focus on the default rules and what the default rules say. Now, as far as the default rules are concerned, what they basically say is that the country where the employee habitually carries out his or her work will be the place which governs the law of the contract. So in the case of a non-migrant worker, clearly that would be the, the law of the country in which they work. Madam, pardon my interruption. Could you kindly speak a little closer to the microphone? Interpreters would like to hear you a little better. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. So in the case of non-migrant workers, it's uh, the law in which they, uh, the country in which they work. And in the case of migrant workers, it's the law of the country to which they go to work. So a Polish worker working in the United Kingdom, migrant worker under Article 45, they will be governed by UK law. And the rules do not change where an employee is temporarily employed in another country. So in the case of posted workers, their law will be the law of the country from which they come. So that would be a Polish worker posted to the United Kingdom. The Polish worker will still be governed by Polish law because they are only temporarily in the United Kingdom. However, in respect of those um, who are temporarily in another country, they will be subject to so-called overriding mandatory provisions. And that's the jargon used in the Rome 1 regulation. And these overriding mandatory provisions are laid down in Article 9.1 of the regulation. And what that means is that in the case of a Polish worker temporarily posted to the UK, it will be Polish law that applies, subject to overriding mandatory provisions of UK law. Now that sounds quite complicated, but what's actually happened is that the Posted Workers Directive has basically said the EU is going to identify what those overriding mandatory provisions will be. And so what the Posted Workers Directive has said is that in the case of a Polish worker temporarily in the United Kingdom, although Polish law will generally apply, the Posted Workers Directive lists a series of rules in Articles 3.1 A to G, and those rules listed in Article 3.1 A to G of the Posted Workers Directive so rules on minimum rates of pay, health and safety, equal treatment, those will be applied to the Polish worker. So the posted worker will be subject to UK law in the areas listed in Articles 3.1a to g. Now, the crucial point to note is this does not mean equal treatment. 
It's only those rules in those areas designated in Articles 3.1a to g. It's not a comprehensive application of UK law. And the Laval decision, which was mentioned earlier, the Laval decision makes it clear that the application of those rules in Articles 3.1a to g are exceptions to the general principle, and as exceptions to the general principle, they've got to be narrowly construed. So the basic rule still is that Polish law applies. Now, this is important to understand because now we have to put the extra layer on top, which is the treaty provisions. And the treaty distinguishes between migrant workers under Article 45 and posted workers under Article 56. And in the case of migrant workers, so those people who are migrating on a permanent basis, they will be subject to the rules of the host state and they will enjoy full equal treatment. Now this is where labor law and migration law come together because labor lawyers have traditionally said that anyone who's working in the territory of the state will benefit from all of labor law. And that's what you get under Article 45 of the treaty. Posted workers, on the other hand, because they are governed by the law of the home state, so Poland in the case of a Polish worker temporarily posted to the UK. In the case of posted workers, it's home state law, but when they're temporarily in the UK, they will also get some of those rights under the posted workers directive, but not equal treatment. And that is crucial. And that's why it makes a difference whether an individual is moving under Article 45 or under Article 56. To put it in a different way, what we're seeing is migrant workers, 45, under Article 45, and under the Rome 1 regulation, they enjoy full equal treatment in the host state. Posted workers only get very limited rights under the Posted Workers Directive. And now we need to add in what is being proposed by the new draft directive, which is the argument, the idea, that if the anticipated or effective duration of your contract in the host member state is for two years or more, you will enjoy the full range of rights in the host state, in other words, equal treatment. Now, at one level, that looks very attractive, and to labor lawyers, that looks very attractive indeed, because it's consistent with the labor law idea that you get the rights equivalent to those of anyone else working in the state that you're working. But what I want you to, tr to see, and I hope you can see from this diagram, is that this new category that is being proposed by the draft directive essentially deletes the distinction between migrant workers under Article 45 and posted workers under Article 56. It's basically making a posted worker who is there with an anticipated duration of two years or more just like a migrant worker and enjoy the full benefits of equal treatment. Now, you might say that's a good thing, particularly if you are from a trade union background, you would say, of course, they should be given the rights, the same rights as anyone else working in the host state. But there is a legal problem, and the legal problem is that the legal basis of the directive is not in the social provisions of the treaty, it's not in the provisions on free movement of workers, but it's in the provisions on services. 
And as we've seen with services, the basic idea with services is that it is home state law that applies, not host state law. And yet the effect of this change will be in respect of workers um, who are anticipated from day one that they will be there for longer than two years. Now, I'm more concerned about the anticipated duration than the effective duration. The anticipated duration looks at it from today. From today, am I going to be posted for two years plus? in which case I will enjoy equal treatment from day one and thus treating me much more like a migrant worker under Article 45 and not a posted worker under Article 56. And yet the legal basis of the directive is in the services provision. And so this sits very uncomfortably and the recitals make it even more uncomfortable because the recitals seem to want to have their cake and eat it to say on the one hand it will be equal treatment from day one but on the other hand uh, say that the, they fully respect the rules on article 56. My final point is I was asked to say something about the position in the United Kingdom both now and going forward. Well, the first point is, and we've already seen that from the statistics that were looked at before, that there are relatively few posted workers incoming or outgoing in um, the United Kingdom. It's about 43,000 incoming and 30,000 outgoing. Very, very small. And the simple reason for that is partly historic. And the historic reason is that the UK, together with Ireland and Sweden, were the only countries that didn't impose transitional arrangements in 2004 when the EU8 joined the European Union. And therefore, lots of workers who might have come as posted workers came as migrant workers under Article 45. So we have very few coming under Article 56, all, nearly all workers come to the UK as migrant workers under Article 45 and thus enjoy the principle of equal treatment from day one. The other rather complicated factor in the UK is despite the fact that the Posted Workers Directive says, as we have already seen, that posted workers will only get the rights listed in Articles 3.1a to g, in fact, the UK has always adopted a territorial application of its law and therefore applies all of its law to everyone in its territory. And therefore, everyone who comes as a migrant worker, as a posted worker, only gets, uh, gets all the rights laid down by UK law. Although UK law operates on a longitudinal basis, the longer you're there, the more rights you get. And because most posting is for a very short period, therefore, in fact, a lot of posted workers don't get very many rights because they're not there for um, very long at all. And my other point is, in um, this respect, that although you will have heard a great deal about migration having a considerable effect on the voting public's view in the referendum which led to a vote to leave, in fact, what the concerns were, were not about posted workers, it was all about migrant workers. And I will conclude with two rather shocking slides. The first one, is uh, from the UKIP, the UK Independent Party. It's a um, uh, poster not over the referendum campaign, but over the European Parliament elections. And as you can see, classic, the concerns, EU policy at work, British workers are hit hard by unlimited cheap labor. So the idea of migrant labor was, is undermining British jobs. And this is a selection of front pages from the right-wing press in the UK, which made migration a very big issue. And as you can see, if you look carefully, they confuse migration, both economic migration from within the European Union, 
but also migration coming from third countries like Syria. Look at the fourth uh, one along, which says Exodus in big letters. And of course, lots of the public don't know the difference between the two because nobody's ever explained it to them. But what you do see, and I apologize given the country I'm in for any offense this causes, but what you see if you look at some of these headlines is concerns about migrant workers claiming benefits on equal terms to nationals. And it was that was one of the main reasons why the British public voted to leave the European Union. It had nothing to do with posted workers. Thank you very much indeed.